when me and Beth could go out, it was exhilarating, it was relaxing. It didn't matter where we were going, it was the, it was the journey that was important. I used to love my bikes, I used to love the touring aspect of it. And I think I was, it was my 40th birthday. I said to Beth, I wouldn't mind giving bikes a go. I was going down the main road, nice and slow and steady. And a young boy just didn't see me. I was minutes from dying on the side of the road. I can only recall things that people have told me about the accident. Mentally, it was the toughest thing I've ever had to go through. I can remember going into you and, and you saying, I've told them to take my leg, just told them that they, they, they can go, it's not good to me. And I, I think that was when I knew that things weren't quite right with, like, with uh, you and your mind, yeah. All right. No matter how much people tell you to look forward, it's so difficult not to look back and just feel distraught sometimes. It's a feeling of helplessness. The professionals told me that you failed. Oh, sorry. sorry. They told me that you feel grief, and I never understood what they meant until you start to realize how it affects your day to day living. When I first wore, it was a new sensation, a different thing for me to do, and I'm in parallel bar, so I could only take a couple of steps. I couldn't build any confidence. I do a little bit of walking, some hip mobility, and some upper body strength work. And Yako the one day said, we've got this new treadmill. Do you want to give it a go? So I get on it, and I'm walking, and all of a sudden he's saying, right, I'll put some objects in your way. Then there's a projector that projects objects and I'm having to move around them and it became interesting and intriguing and it became a challenge and I love a challenge so I'm right, I've got to get better at this. There was all different types of functions I could do. I could walk in a slalom, in a straight line, over stepping stones, over obstacles. And when Yako explained to me that it was intuitive, so rather than just randomly send them out, it was so clever that it would work out my stride patterns and then put an object exactly where I wanted to put my foot. So it's making it as realistic as possible that I can get my timing right, I can adjust. And I learned that on the sea mill. It just recreates real life situations that I can practice over and over again and get better and better and better at and then it gives me more security and confidence when I'm out and about then. I was really amazed and struck by how much feedback that you can get from a machine like that, real-time feedback. It does have to be experienced and tried to, to get the real understanding about what you can really achieve with something like the Seamill. My rehabilitation just skyrocketed through the roof and I learned techniques, I learned how to use my leg properly. The light was switched on with, I could, I could possibly play golf again, yeah? I love the way they worked. I love what they were doing. It's definitely the future of rehabilitation. You have to instill in people that they can do it, that they don't doubt themselves, and you understand that there's always a way around your disability to allow you to do it. so difficult to explain this. I'm so confident about what I do and how I feel about myself and my abilities now. But I never felt like that before the accident. I always doubted myself. Now I'm a strong believer in fate, that things happen for a reason. The accident has given me opportunities that I intend to grasp. I like to describe myself as I'm Mike. 
I'm a golfer that happens to have a disability, but I will never let that disability define me.